to have a, we will listen to something very special. And I think uh, Jeff knows more about that. So, Jeff? Uh, Thomas Janossi has uh, lived in Canada for over 20 years where he's been involved in the work of some of the major uh, food supplement manufacturers in the United States of developing uh, detoxing, um, detoxing remedies for, for many years. And, and he got increasingly frustrated that they were not following his expert advice of putting together the optimal solution. So some years ago, he actually um, set out to formulate this optimal solution uh, on his own. And the reason he's here today is that uh, one of the other Hungarians here, Dr. Sander Kulin, was looking for his autism project for a good detoxing solution. And he found Thomas's website in Canada for that. And the two doctors, and I won't go into all the rest of the story, who actually happened to have children who went to the same scout camp in the summers without the two men knowing each other, uh, ha are now collaborating. And this is why Thomas today uh, is working inside the Ness family and has contributed with the, this uh, amazing detoxing um, formulation of natural biodynamic remedies that has been imprinted with the, with the Ness uh, information. But what particularly struck us when he was giving a presentation in Denmark two months ago was his background and his understanding of how toxic the world we are living in is. And I have to say it scared the living daylights out of me and I went home and I started detoxing my whole family because of his presentation. <laughs> so over to Thomas and if this is really scary, at least I hope you don't lose your appetite. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to be here. And uh, also, I still feel the jet lag. <laughs> I, I gladly talk about uh, uh, the toxins. Um, first of all, if you think about um, what is really keeping us away from being healthy, and really the key word, I would say, is information. But when we talk about information, uh, the cells need information. And uh, Peter Fraser and so many other people said also that if the cells are loaded with toxins, then they cannot really process information. So with this introduction, um, I would like to um, describe the environment that we are in, but first of all, uh, mention a few of the sources of the toxins. Uh, not many people know that there are 75,000 chemicals registered in the US and every day, seven brand new chemicals are released. Uh, the problem is that there are no studies about the effects, and especially no studies about the interaction of the toxins. There are 700 chemicals in the human fat that are not identified. Just think about it, not identified. Nobody knows where they were coming from, what they are doing, they are sitting there. Um, in the news, we constantly hear about the toxins. I would just pick now um, on two. One is the mercury. Of course, mercury uh, is coming up in various ways, not even uh, in the influenza vaccine, for example. Um, but methyl mercury, and that is, by the way, uh, the type of mercury uh, that is in the uh, multiple use vaccines, because uh, I guess basically uh, just for saving money for the vaccine manufacturers, if, if, if I focus for a second on that problem. Because as the, the vaccine is taken out from the bottle, they want to use the same bottle for the next shot. So they want to keep their uh, preservative, basically that kills all the uh, bugs, the, the bacteria. And, and this is why they put it into uh, the vaccine, the uh, methyl mercury. Anyhow, but recently they discovered uh, or measured methyl mercury even in uh, corn syrup. Uh, and of course, we know that fructose is in jam, yogurts, uh, chocolate, uh, barbecue sauce. So this is a recent discovery. Nobody knew because nobody measured. 
that in these uh, foods uh, they are mercury. Uh, the, the other one that uh, I selected here is bisphenol A, BPA. Um, what is new now here that uh, previously they believed that the, uh, this type of toxin is leaving the body quite fast, uh, within 24 hours. And now they have uh, realized that uh, it stays there for a very long time. Um, luckily, more and more uh, countries are banning um, this type of toxin. Um, Canada banned it um, in uh, baby bottles, so it, it, it cannot uh, be used for uh, children. The problem goes back to the, uh, to the beginning of life. Uh, when um, uh, children are growing in a womb, uh, they are loaded with toxins from their mothers. And newborns, they did a, a study, it's called the body burden. Newborns um, um, had a huge amount of toxins. This study was done in, in the US in 2004, and um, there were 10 umbilical cords that was tested for various toxins. Unfortunately, only 10 was measured because one um, very specific measurement, uh, or in fact, very wide-ranging measurement in this sense, uh, wide-ranging in terms of uh, measuring so many toxins, cost 10,000 US dollars. I wish there would be some foundations or some uh, deep pocket individuals who would really look into it, uh, how we um, help or, or actually how we hinder the future of uh, the babies and, and our children and uh, the future generation. What happened here is uh, they measured 413 toxins and there were two, 287 that showed up. Um, the slide is not very clear here, but uh, uh, they measured mercury. Of course, uh, it often comes from pollutant from coal-fired power plants. They uh, measured the polyaromatic hydrocarbons, uh, polybrominated uh, dipensodioxins, and um, the list goes on. Uh, but the, the problem is that um, since the 1970s, up to 2000, the autism rate went up 10, ten times, male birth defects two times, childhood asthma two times, acute lymphatic uh, Lymphocytic leukemia, 65%. Childhood brain cancer increased by 40%. Preterm uh, birth, 23% increase. Infertility, uh, 5 to 10% in couples. Actually, um, that's an increasingly um, huge problem, uh, the infertile couples. Birth defects, um, 3 to 5%. And the sperm counts. Um, decreasing yearly by 1%, 1% every year. So the question is, if a child or a baby um, had some toxins very early on in his or her life, then how would it affect um, later the, the overall well-being of that person? Would it have any effect on the adult diseases? And the answer is yes. Um, early lead exposure now linked to uh, Alzheimer's disease. In other words, if a child had no exposure, then there is no Alzheimer. These type of studies are very exciting. Here's the reference. Uh, uh, you will be able to, to get it later on or a, or a copy of this uh, uh, presentation. The other uh, um, medical conditions, mental disorders, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, they, they can be all linked to very early exposure to toxins. And um, strangely enough, the pollution cuts the baby boy numbers especially. We are the weak, weak ones, right? <laughs> but the, the real serious problem is um, what they measured very recently um, it was done, uh, well, relatively recently, it was 2005, June is the study, the epigenetic inheritance. What it means that so far they measured with two uh, pesticides uh, that they had an effect 
on the generations for three levels. So it, it affected not only the person who received uh, um, uh, basically this toxin, but uh, the person's uh, child or daughter, and then the uh, granddaughter, and then the great-granddaughter. Just think about it, if, if you eat something or do something, and it, the, the penalty in a broader sense, if I can say this word, it just goes on and on. Um, there was an interesting study in, uh, that came out in uh, February 9, 2009, just recently, with Inuits. Uh, what they found that uh, the persistent organic pollutants, or POPs, um, they stayed in the, in the Inuits. And um, uh, again, the problem is that uh, the, it, it is passed on uh, along the generations. Um, POPs do, um, they, they alter the methylation that is associated with cancer. How many of you have heard about it, that in China, in every second week, a new uh, coal-fired power plant is being opened and activated? Every second week. And of course, the regulations are uh, not the same as here uh, in, in Western, more developed countries. And um, uh, the Chinese uh, coal is loaded with mercury, uh, among other things. And of course, there is a jet stream, and it comes from Asia. Here you can follow the blue, and uh, it uh, reaches the Arctic, and by the time it cools down to the point that it, uh, it is being dropped to the surface of the, uh, of the Arctic. So the biomass is very thin in, Art in the Arctic region. So uh, unfortunately, the Inuits are really affected. And um, uh, we reached a point that uh, Inuit mothers uh, cannot really feed their children because their uh, breast milk uh, has such a high level of toxins that the US EPA would consider it to be a, a toxic substance that has to be uh, uh, discarded in a very special way. So when you see a couple uh, who are going to be married, and you are thinking about, oh, what, what kind of gift should I give to, the, to that couple um, before they, they will have uh, children? The best gift is to, to encourage them to, to go through a detoxification. <laughs> there's, there's no other way to look at it, because, because clearly, well, yeah, you can, you can buy uh, some, some kind of nice gift, but, but giving wellness as a gift is much more valuable than doing anything else. Now, how many of you have, okay, what is this? Maybe a few of you uh, would figure it out. It's not an amoeba, not a human or animal cell. Anyhow, this is an island. And I, I take this part a bit uh, lighter because it was to me so depressing, the, the uh, previous part. And this island is called Fiji, uh, sorry, uh, Bora Bora uh, in the French Polynesia. And this island is lucky. Uh, lucky because the currents are going in a way that is not really um, um, picking up much, well, I will talk about it in a second, much uh, garbage, I will tell you now. How many of you have heard about Captain Charles Moore? He's a very famous person by now, but he was not known up until um, uh, 19, late 19, uh, well, probably 1998, 1999. What happened that um, he participated in a, a sailing race uh, going from, uh, from California to Hawaii, uh, the Transpac. And as he came back, he, instead of taking the usual route going back straight to California, he went further north first. And what he, he came across is a um, on left and right, both sides of the boat, huge amount of garbage, just floating garbage in the uh, Pacific Ocean. <clears throat> he, saw, um, he became so famous that he, he, he presented his uh, findings at the international seminars or on planetary emergencies in the Vatican in front of the Pope in August 2006. 
So what happens here that uh, there are these giant ocean currents. Uh, you may have heard about the Coriolis effect. Anyway, I, I don't want to go into it, but, but the key point is that uh, there's an equatorial current going down here, and uh, um, this is called the North Pacific Gyre, um, but more uh, precisely, now it is also called the North Pacific Garbage Dump. There are islands that are not so lucky because uh, they are sitting right in the middle of this uh, uh, big uh, current of garbage. Uh, one island is the Midway, and um, what happens here that uh, nobody could see it from the from the uh, from, with, with satellites because the garbage is just sitting below the surface, and because the the large ships are always following the currents. I'm sorry, always follow the currents because it saves them fuel. And of course, sailboats are always following the currents because uh, uh, this is the doldrum. You know, there is not not much. Uh, this is a high pressure area. I'm also a sailor, so I, I love this stuff. <laughs> but the the problem is that practically nobody goes straight here, and um, if giant container ships go, they never watch the water or the garbage, or they never notice. So it had had to be a sailor who was very close to the water level to to recognize what's going on. And what happens, you can see here that the depth is about 10 meters below the surface. That is practically tiny floating garbage. Uh, now this is a major